Hey everybody, Scott here from Wedding Film School. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Thanks so much for being here. Today I wanna to talk all about communication. Not communication between your team members, but communication between you and the other vendors at a wedding shoot. As I've been doing wedding films for the last three to four years, I've noticed a trend that happens more often than not, and that is the fact that a lot of people like to complain about other vendors getting in their way or a situation not going as planned or an unexpected thing happening that they just didn't see coming. And I think at the root of so many of the issues we run into, it simply comes down to one major thing, and that is communication. How well are you communicating with the other vendors on a wedding day. It's really easy sometimes when you've been doing wedding films for a while to know exactly how you need to do things, how you need to light things, how you need to set people up. You're good at what you do, so it's easy to kind of just jump right in, go full force, and not really remember that there are other vendors that were also there paid by the couple, and it's not just all about you. We've all been in this situation where you are just about to get that perfect shot, and then suddenly the photographer jumps in your way and is in your way the entire time, and there's nothing you can do about it. And we've all been there in the situation that you go to get speeches the way that you have. You get them lit right, you get them sounding great, you are ready for it to be perfect, and then the DJ announces them from somewhere else and he puts them next to the table if that's not necessarily what you're looking for. It's just not an ideal situation. So how do we get better at making sure that the situations that we can control, we control? One of the most important things that I think about when going into a wedding day is the fact that there are certain aspects of the wedding day that are extremely important to me as a videographer, things like speeches and even things like the ceremony. And there are certain things that are really, really important to the photographer and I don't necessarily need to jump in her way on those things. And if I give the photographer, him or her, leeway to do what they want in certain aspects of the day, I can control other aspects of the day that are more important to me if the communication is there. But more times than not, I feel like when something does not go as planned whatsoever, it's usually because I never had communication with the right person, therefore, why should I have expected it to go better than it did? So situation number one, you get to a ceremony. As a videographer, our positions normally are three pretty common places. There's usually a camera to the side that's catching the bride, another camera to the other side that's catching the groom. For us, we shoot those fairly tight, so no one's really in the way of those shots. The only shot that kind of varies and gets around different locations throughout the ceremony is my camera that's on a monopod or my first shoot or whoever that is that day. And I will be moving around of that camera getting different things. I will get the bride walking down the aisle from the front. I will get some of the stuff in the main aisle. I will move around quite a bit. But it's important that right when I get to the ceremony, I talk with the photographers and I ask them simple questions. How do you shoot your uh, ceremony? I'll be down here. Okay, as they come down? Alex, I don't know if you're trying to get up there, it's locked. So you're gonna shoot up there, tracking them down? Okay, I'll hang with you there. Now before this conversation even happens, it's important that I've been friendly with them all day, with any vendor, whether it's the florist, the photographer, whoever is working with this couple, we are working together for this couple, and so it's important right away when they arrive that I get off on a good foot, I say hello, I get a feel for where they're from, and I just start to build relationship with them. When I build a good relationship with people, it's easy for me to ask for certain things later in the day because I've been a kind person already to him. Hi, Scott. Nice to meet you, Jennifer. That's Pablo. That's Scott. Nice to meet you, Maddie. Tyler. How are you doing, Tyler? Nice to meet Good you. to meet you. As soon as the ceremony wraps up, the next thing that comes about is the reception. And in the reception, there are three important things to me, and that is the first dances, the speeches, and let's just say the entrances or maybe the party dancing overall. Now with all those things, there are important elements for me as a videographer, the way that I shoot things that I need to get in a situation that is gonna work for what I'm looking to get. I wanna get lighting correctly for the speeches and I wanna make sure I get audio set up. My typical setup for speeches is to have the person giving the speech in the center of the dance floor looking at the couple, so I usually light things on the corner of one of the areas facing them and I shoot the opposite side. But it's important that when I do that, I don't just surprise the photographer out of nowhere or the DJ. I make sure that right away, when I go up to the DJ and the photographer, I tell them what to expect in the speeches. Hey, good to see you too, how are you? Good. Um, yeah, it would be great if we could have the speeches right here, just looking straight at them, and I'll tell them to find you, uh, find you for the mic. For the speeches, for the speeches, I light like this. Is that gonna be okay for you? I mean, that's, that's perfect for me. Yeah, that's all right, right perfect, awesome. For the speeches, since those are a really, really important part of like what we get for the film's sake, 
In normally my situation would be that I would set them up in the middle of the dance floor and they would look at the head table. This is clearly a different setup. So what we're gonna do, the G I talked to the DJs already and, and I'll talk to people giving the speeches. You see where the guy in the backwards hat is standing right there eating? Yes. The person giving the speech will be basically face the opposite way, looking at them in the middle of everybody. Okay. I light them from, from one angle, it'll, look, okay. it'll, it'll be the same color temperature as the actual lights. Okay. And it will look anywhere you shoot besides that angle will look really, really good for okay. it. Now a common question so many people get is, well, what do you do when the person doesn't stand in the position? Well, that usually doesn't have to be a big issue if you have communication with the person giving the speech. So I make it a point to go up to the people that are going to be giving the speeches and explain to them what I'm thinking. But there's a DJ that's gonna bring you and have a mic at the center of the dance floor looking at the couple. So if the table's there, you're looking at them. So not standing next to them, okay? okay? And you're gonna look like a million bucks, we're gonna light you and you're gonna look like they a million bucks. You're giving, you're giving the speech, right? Yes. You doing good? You doing good? You ready? Well, I was just asking him. I was like, well, wondering where I'm going to be. I, that's, that's what I was going to say. I'm going to have you lit really well. I'm going to make you look amazing on it, and I'm going to make you sound even better. So the key is for me, you're going to, as much as you can, you, you can have a little freedom of obviously, like, talking. Try not to leave this whole zone and, like, go over there. I don't do public speaking. I'm going to look right at him. Oh, fantastic. Through, even better. Sit my ass down. And the key, and the key <laughs> is just be really confident on the mic. Even, even if you're not confident speaking, just don't do this because we won't hear anything you say. Oh, yeah. so now, I can't get great audio if I also don't have the conversation with the DJ about what I need from an audio standpoint. Hey, now. do you mind if I patch out of your line out to get a feed? Not at all. Since you got power to make it so easy and nice and super clean, I love it. I'll go down, is that gaff tail? I can, I can get another piece yeah. to reroute it clean for you. Roll. If you don't too, I can get some. I just like to respect your cleanness. Oh, yeah. I love the cleanness. Yeah. <laughs> Now a huge thing to note, when I walk up to that DJ to talk about audio, I did not just go and plug into his system. I make sure I have the conversation with him first to see what he has. Having an audio background like I do, I know certain gear, so I could very easily go up to any situation and set it up myself, but I never do that. Always make it a point to talk to the DJ first. Introduce yourself first. Get to know the person if you can, if you have a few minutes to talk. Don't just immediately go up to them and say, hi, can I get some audio from you? Introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Scott, how are you doing today? Good, hey, I like your setup, it looks clean, it looks nice, I like the lighting, all this kind of stuff. Hey, would you mind if I get some audio from you? I can use an XLR, a quarter inch, have all those things ready because not every situation is the same and the last thing you want is to say I only have an XLR and they don't have an XLR output for you. Make sure you have everything available that you would need to get the audio you want. So what happens in the situation when I set up the lighting the way that I want and I have my speeches where I know I want them to be and then I get pushback from let's just say the DJ or the venue or the photographer and they say that's just not where I like speeches, I like to normally have them on the side of the table. Now here's the thing. If I have had good conversation with them leading up to this event, let's say the speeches, and I've given them tons of leeway with photo shoot opportunities and time and given them time with the couple directly, and I haven't jumped all over their opportunities that they've wanted to get, I don't mind saying speeches are very important to me and this is the one thing that I do want to make sure that I control, and so unfortunately that's just how I want them done. But that only sounds rude saying if you haven't built relationship with that person. If I've been rude all day to them and I'm jumping in front of their shots and redirecting everything they're doing and then I ask for that, they're not gonna be very happy with it and I can't expect anything good to come out of it. But if they think to themselves, yeah, you know what? Speeches are not vital for me because they all look the same and he's lighting things and it looks good and if this is the way he wants it, that's fine. They're not gonna have a couple complain that they didn't get a good picture of the speech. They will complain to us as videographers if we don't capture the speech well. So it's important to know what's most important to us as videographers. Have I had certain photographers, certain DJs, certain venues that I wasn't crazy about? Of course, there's always gonna be times that you didn't necessarily have the ideal situation, but I would never under any circumstance show unprofessionalism on the job. Even if a photographer or a DJ did something that I completely just did not like whatsoever, and even if they made a fool out of me for some reason, I would never bring it up in person. I would never ever cause a scene that would help or make anyone see 
that I wasn't acting professionally on the job. Referrals are the number one way that I get weddings. And I think that it's probably one of the number one ways that most of us get weddings. And so make sure that your relationship stays strong. Make sure that you communicate with people. And the more you communicate with people, the better experience you'll all have together. We're all trying to do the best job that we possibly can, but at the end of the day, it's important to remember that we should just be kind people. Let's try to work harder at building the name of a videographer as something that people wanna work with. So I hope some of this was helpful to you. Would love to know some of your takeaways on this and maybe some things that you took out of this video that you might try to implement in your next wedding, or maybe give me some feedback on some times that communication proved to be important to you and how you communicate on your wedding days. Thanks as always for watching. This is Scott from Wedding Film School and I will see you guys again very soon.